Today we're going to talk about a selection method in Photoshop that you maybe have not used before but it works amazing for selecting and removing all of one color from your photo really quickly. So let's get started. Hello friends, my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com and today we're going to talk about another selection method to use in your Photoshop toolkit. Although I've talked about a bunch of amazing ways to cut out images in Photoshop in previous videos on my channel, this one focuses on something a little bit different as it uses color to create a selection rather than any of the edges in your photo. What this tool is actually called is Select Color and how it works is you sample a color somewhere in your photo and it will turn that color into a selection. Now, now this works really well if you have a photo taken in a studio with a solid colored background or for example you're working with a product image and you need to remove the white background from behind it. No matter what you're trying to cut out as long as it has some type of solid color behind it you can quickly remove it using this technique. So let's hop into Photoshop and see how to do it. So the photo that we're working with today was obviously taken in a studio and it has a solid colored background making it the perfect candidate for this selection method. To start things off, I'll click on the background layer and just press Command or Control J to duplicate that layer so we can edit non-destructively. Now to access our Select Color tool with our duplicated layer selected, I'll go up to Select and then Color Range. The Color Range panel will appear and it might look something like this and at first it's quite confusing because what the heck are you looking at? Well to make life a little easier, you can set your selection preview to None and that's going to ensure that you see your regular image while this is the preview that stays within the panel. So what you're looking at here is essentially how a layer mask works. Everything that is white within this thumbnail here is going to be added to your selection while everything that is black will not be included. So essentially what we need to do is make all of the background black while our subject stays white. Now, in order for that to happen, we need to first sample a color from our photo. By default, our eyedropper tool will be selected so we can go and click anywhere on our image to sample the color we're looking for. Now notice, as I sampled right here, it changed this area to black, meaning that it is excluded from the selection currently. However, if you do not have this invert option checked off like I do, then you're gonna see something like this. So anywhere that you click, is going to add to your selection. So for this example, since we want to get rid of the background, we're gonna be sampling the area we want to delete. Therefore, I'll click the invert option, and then I can sample all of the background while my subject remains visible, AKA white. Now the problem here is that as you click, your selection area changes. So we need to add to our sample. You can do that by either clicking on this eyedropper tool with the plus icon, or you can hold the shift key and notice how I now have a plus icon beside my eyedropper. With that plus icon, I can continue to click around my image until all of the background is black, AKA deselected, deleted from our selection area. So once you've done the bulk of your sampling, we'll change the selection preview down to grayscale. Now we can get a much clearer view of what's happening here. So then you can see right near her headphones, there's an area that I need to add. So I'll hold the shift key, click near those headphones. And then likewise, down by her hip, I can hold the shift key, click there. That's gonna make those slightly gray areas now fully black. Now at this point, our cutout is looking really, really nice. And we have a very clear difference between our background and our subject here. However, in some images, this may not work so perfectly right out of the gate. And that's where the fuzziness slider comes into play. As I increase the fuzziness, notice how more and more gets deselected from our sampled areas. And that's because as you increase the fuzziness, you increase the tolerance for which colored areas can be added into your selection. So in this photo, since we've sampled the orange background with a high fuzziness, we're also sampling some of the yellow and orange hues in her skin tones, which is why some of that is now being deselected. Now, if I went and decrease this all the way down, it's gonna be a little bit more picky since some of these orange hues in the background maybe have a bit of shadow on them so they don't match the same hue that the oranges over here have. So that's where the fuzziness slider becomes super useful is because you can help refine it to tell Photoshop how much tolerance is allowed between where you just sampled and what you want in your selection area. I usually like to play around with this option if, until I find something that works for me. But in this case, it seems like right around 40 works really well because all of the background 
is black while all of my subject is white. So this is a perfect fuzziness setting for this image. With everything all set up here, we need to now turn this into a selection and all we have to do to do that is press OK. Now those black and white areas will be turned into a selection. With our duplicated layer chosen, we can just add that selection onto a layer mask. Now I still have my background layer turned on, so I'll hide that one. And now our background has been removed because of this layer mask right here. Now looking at this, it looks pretty good against a white background, but you don't always know exactly how perfect a cutout is until you put it into another photo or against a dark background. So let's add a black layer underneath this one to see how the edges are looking. Adding a new layer, setting my foreground color to black and then just filling that layer. You can now get a better idea of how these edges are looking. Now, although they look pretty good considering we were just sampling some colors, there's obviously some fringing left over, which is this orange bit around the edges of our subject. And that's just a few pixels left over from the background of the original background. Luckily, we can get rid of all of this stuff quite easily using Select and Mask. Now to access Select and Mask, all we need to do is double click on the layer mask thumbnail in question, and that's gonna bring up our Select and Mask adjustments. The first thing I like to do in this case, since we only need to really get rid of some of that fringing, is we'll just work within these global refinements. I'll increase the smoothing a few points here, and then increase the feather as well, just around one pixel. That's going to smooth out the edges and also give them a slight blur. Now obviously we don't want blurry edges, so we'll add back some contrast by bringing it up to around 15 or 20%. Now already this does do a pretty good job, but now we can take it one step further and shift the edge in by a few percent. So this is gonna move the selection edge inwards towards our subject and help get rid of some of that fringing. Now you can go crazy with this if you wanted, but you may end up with some issues, especially around hair or small edges. So that's why I'm going to just leave this around 10% for now. Now with all of that looking good, I'll go to the decontaminate colors option, check that off. And that's gonna get rid of the remaining bit of fringing for us. I'll set my output to new layer with layer mask so it stays separate and then I'll click okay. Now our new version is on a new layer here. I'll just call this to select and mask and I'll just call this to original so that we're both on the same page here. So now looking at our select and mask, this is after all the adjustments we just created to get rid of that fringing. Our cutout is looking pretty good and the edges look very clean. If I turn on the original image, you can see where that fringing comes into play and it just doesn't look as clean. So doing that select and mask adjustment afterwards is a really nice way to just touch everything up a bit so then when you go and add this into another photo or replace the background, you have a perfectly clean cutout. Deleting that black background layer, we are now certain that we have a nice selection and cutout of our subject using our select color option. Now, like I said before, this is an amazing tool for selecting studio backgrounds or product image backgrounds. And as well, you can use the same feature for removing the background from a logo for example, as well. Although this tool is quite niche as it only can be used in some situations that have those solid colors that you need to remove, I think it is still a great selection method to have in the back of your mind and add to your Photoshop toolkit when you're trying to make some new selections. All right, so now you know how to use select color in Photoshop like a pro to make awesome clean selections in no time by sampling colors. Now, if you enjoyed today's tutorial and are gonna use this exact technique in your future edits, then make sure to hit that like button down below as it really does make a difference and also consider subscribing to stay up to date with more editing tutorials just like today. Again, my name is Brennan from bewellcreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.